This is Cameron Chai from Azom.com and I'm speaking to John Keel from CLAS and he's going to walk us through their, their new 1190 particle size analyzer. Well, welcome. I'm here today to highlight the, uh, the brand new, just introduced at PitCon this year, the Sealess Laser Particle Size Analyzer Model 1190. Um, some of the unique features that you'll see here is we have a fully integrated wet and, and dry dispersion. The wet dispersion is for aqueous solutions or slurries where we're able to uh, circulate the same sample through the optical path to, get up to verify and measure our particle size distribution. We're then able to run the same sample if it's not a slurry, if it's a dry powder, and put it in the compartment for the dry analysis using the same optical path. Sealess has introduced 1190 with one of the key features being there is no mechanical change between the wet dispersion and the dry dispersion when you want to make a measurement. It is seamless and controlled only by software. Part of the way we are able to do that is we use the exact same optical path for the wet as we do the dry. The dry dispersion uses a vibrating hopper for taking the sample and de the sample into a Venturi module and placing it in the optical path. The wet dispersion uses a ultrasonic bath to de the sample and peristaltic pumps to pump the sample through the same optical path. The 1190 is a three laser system which allows us to go from 0.04 microns or 40 nanometers up to two and a half millimeters or 2,500 microns in one instrument with no optical changes. Through the um, uh, circulatory system, we also have the ability to use that exact same sample for image analysis. What happens is as it's going through the dispersion system, we also export it out of the instrument into the Sealess Imaging Shape Analysis uh, Analyzer. With this, we're able to not only get particle size as the particle size analyzer does, but we are also able to get specific shape characteristics and see how those affect the particle size shape. As particle size analyzers assume everything is a sphere. Um, when you know you do not have a spherical particle, you need to get other features to be able to make more uh, characterization for the, the content, the shape, the size, and the characteristics of that particle. So the flow of the particle comes into the flow cell, out the flow cell, back into the same instrument without the need to drain the sample or use another sample for the exact same analysis on imaging as we did in particle size. To show you some of the results, we will come over to the particle size analyzer and first thing we see here is we see a liquid dispersion and using our WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get display we are able to circulate and there is a stir we are able to turn ultrasounds on or off to pump the system to disperse the system all mechanically through a very easy to use interface some of the results you'll see, um, this is an overlay of one of the samples we're running here at PitCon this year, and you'll notice the very good overlays of, of the same sample run five times. What customers will look for is a very good, what we say, co coefficient of variation, and in this case, we want to, to get as close to zero as possible be, as, a, as far as a difference between one sample to the next, and here you can see we have a 1% coefficient of variation at the diameter of 10%. At the median size, the diameter of 50%, we have a coefficient of 1.2. And at the 90% the by volume, we're looking at a 0.8 or 0.795% uh, coefficient of variation, which is very good. Even traceable standards want you to be around a 3% coefficient of variation for the D50. So we're, we're double that at, at the least. Also in some of the graphical interface, you'll see the cumulative curve of the particle size shapes and you will see the histogram or the, uh, the relative intensities of the particle size. So this large curve here is your cumulative curve where we will go from 0.04, in this case, we'll hit 100% around 100 microns. Where your histogram data is, you'll see this is a trinodal um, um, sample where we have three definite size uh, particles within the sample or three different particle size ranges. If we want to run a dry dispersion, so this is wet dispersion, we simply come over and we click a button and we are now in the dry dispersion. No mechanical changes occurred. With this, Celis has uh, just come out with a brand new feature on this instrument where we can control the vibratory feeder that I showed you earlier 
to get the best deagglomeration and flow of your system into the particle size analyzer. By clicking this, we are actually causing the vibration of this hopper to take the sample, vibrate it through down into our Venturi module, into the optical path length, and then into finally a vacuum cleaner. Some of the controls we have are the frequency and the duty cycle, and that is something that has just been patented by, by Celis. So it gives you a full range of, of, of analyses from very sticky samples or very free-flowing samples. It does not matter. It's all pre-programmed into your, your SOP based on your sample type. We have full control of the vacuum. You probably cannot hear it, but we have full control over the vacuum as well as compressed air. And we are able to set various air pressures uh, to deagglomerate your sample. One of the other features that we talked about going from wet to dry is we also have the imaging. And the imaging is our shape analysis package. So what you are able to do is in a particle size analyzer, you will assume everything is a sphere as drawn by these red circles. That's what the particle size analyzer would, would see if it were to run through the analyzer. If it, it saw it as a true sphere, it would actually look at one of two measurements. One sphere is around the complete outside, the other is around the complete inside. So by having the ability to look at it in the particle size analyzer and get a curve, which here you'll see is the blue curve. It's difficult to see, I know, on the video, but the red curve is the effective shape. So we can import the particle size analyzer data, overlay it with the particle size or particle shape data, and get a correlation to see what is happening. If I click on this particle in particular, it will give me many different parameters to choose from to get some characterization of my product. So if I want to look at diameters or perimeters or sphericities or circularities, as well as uh, many other you know, convex areas and different shape features, we, we have uh, quite a few features to, to choose from. And you can filter on those as well to say, don't measure um, certain ones that are longer or not a sphere, measure the ones that are a sphere. And that's how we can correlate this effect of the shape. We also have uh, the ability to, to modify the image if we have obscuration. Um, however, typically what we see is having the imaging tool will allow you to add enough sample and to use the, the ultrasound to your, your advantage to deagglomerate your sample prior to imaging. So in this sample you see it's very, they are all separated and you will see that you have a, a large amount of separation between the particles. If I open one other image, you will see on the images, we do have some amount of agglomeration. So in order to correctly measure these and separate some of these agglomerates, we would need more ultrasound. So in the particle size analyzer that have, has gone through the, the measurement of the size and would give a very large reading, versus if we were able to deagglomerate it with ultrasound, we would then break those up into the individual particles. With that, um, hopefully uh, I was able to show you some of the, the key features and benefits of the CELUS, the brand new CELUS 1190 particle size analyzer. And we look forward to speaking to you in the future with any questions you may have. Thank you very much. All right, John, thanks for the tour of the 1190. And if anybody's got any more questions, they can, fire, they can contact you through your website, which would be? www.particle-size.com. All right, John, thanks very much. Thank you very much.